Fuck. All right, let's we're rolling. Rolling. Planet B presents presents Cult and Culture Podcast. All right, this is episode thirty nine of the Cult and Culture Podcast. This one is is by far probably the most bizarre one so mm-hmm. far. Yep. Um, we talk about yoga probably more than we should, but we <laughs> <laughs> we go to this uh, pretty rad studio right down the street from this studio um and there's two instructors there that are both very unique and the main reason why i mm-hmm. said we should do this was because i looked at when you say like oh i play in a punk band or i play in a hip hop mm-hmm. band or whatever the fuck it is the people are like they have no idea what you're really talking about and when you say i go to yoga they think lululemon or or yeah. you know whatever and so um spiritual and yeah, yeah. or just think like not the right thing <clears throat> mm-hmm. and, and so the two instructors that we had um, on this episode, Jamie Lee and Nam Shantarwin, both are so unique in their teaching, but also mm-hmm. in their lives in general. And they're, what they do is just very informative, and um, the way they approach yoga is interesting. And I related it to bands and, mm-hmm. and to the stuff we do. And I was Absolutely. like, oh, we should have them on. So then you decided to do the – thing the extra add-on thing (laughs) oh yeah well i mean it was it all stemmed from um julie and jamie when we were on their podcast we were talking about sound bowls and um, julie and jamie from earthquaker devices yeah uh we were talking about doing the sound bowls with their pedals and it finally came together with oak and uh, you will see us demonstrating it later on in the podcast oak jackson who, who also works at the same studio that um Jamie and Nam teach at so, yeah. Uh, we could probably just go ahead and give a shout out to Pilgrimage of the Heart Yoga. Yeah, everybody there is really, really great. Um, and and you for introducing me to that place and all those people is yeah. so great. Like it, it helped me a lot. Um, like my asshole level <laughs> went from like a ten, and now it's like a nine point five. So <laughs> I really thank them. <laughs> so yeah. Um, cool. So I don't really know what else to say, except you, you should dive into this and, and, and hopefully you'll get something from it. And, um, and if you don't, that's fine too. Um, this isn't Mm -hmm. for everybody. Um, but we appreciate you guys, uh, everybody listening and paying attention to what we have to say. Um, and especially to the yogis that we, the instructors that we had on our, on this Mm -hmm. podcast, it's, it's something else. So we hope you enjoy the ride. Well, my name's Jamie Lee, and I've been teaching yoga for 10 years now, practicing for a little bit longer. And I work in my day job as an anatomical services professional at UCSD's body donation program. I don't know what that is, but we'll get to it. <laughs> yes, we will. <laughs> Uh, my name is Nam Shantuin. Uh I'm a yoga teacher in San Diego, and my day job is actually teaching yoga. I teach it full time, um, whether it's teaching classes or, or doing yoga content. That's what I do. But actually, can we like introduce you how I want to introduce you? <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. So Jamie's <laughs> l- middle name is Lee. It's true. And then she married it to a Lee, so really she's Jamie Lee. 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 Yes. Wow, that's yep. cool. Yeah. yeah. And they asked me at the social security office, are you sure? And I was like, it's funny now. I hope it's funny in, you know, 50 years. <laughs> it's getting less funny, but no, it's still no, pretty it's good. No, it's still funny. It's really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Lee yeah. Lee. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so I, I, um, I thought, well, we thought to have you guys on here because we're always talking about yoga and we go mm-hmm. to the studio that's right down the, the yoga studio is right down the street from Luke's studio. And um, I have a lot of ideas um, about yoga and I feel like, um, we more, mainly have musicians on here, and I feel like when you when you're like, hey, I listen to this kind of music, the, it, there's a lot of bad bands, and and there's a lot of great bands, but but it's hard to be like, oh, I know exactly what they're talking about. This this like level of musicianship. So yoga is the same way. When I'm like, hey, I go to I practice yoga, and I and I and I'm I can kind of see the person that doesn't practice yoga in their brain. They're just like, I don't know what the fuck this guy's talking about. I don't think. I don't think I understand why they do that. And like, they look at us and they're like, you do all this weird stuff. And and then you go and you do yoga. Like it's the, it, they, to them, it's the, the polar opposite. So, so, but I'm like, no, you don't understand the instructors that I 
know like you you have to find them it took me a minute to find you guys you know like i mean there's different kinds of um yoga instructors just like there's different kinds of bands so so i i equated it like that i was like oh this is these are the ones and and i and i hope this is okay but we play weird music and i and i feel like you guys are weird instructors <laughs> um and so it, it makes sense to to me in a in a great way uh, the best way possible and so um both of you are very unique in the way the way you you instruct um and i think maybe it's because of you, you, who you are uh, obviously it's who you are that makes that that makes makes you you but um i don't know i'm kind of i think i might be going off and you guys candy. are cool <laughs> <laughs> thank you well, thank you my mom thinks so yeah <laughs> um, mine does sometimes well so does all your students though like the, mm -hmm. the students are always like you guys are the jam I, it's you you know it's like uh i don't know i feel like i'm going to i feel like i'm going to do a show when i go to your class totally like i feel totally. it, it really does I'll feel like it. that yeah. 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 we yeah. don't do encores though that's i thing. know that's true. <laughs> yeah. that's true i although i try sometimes you know i'm like all right five more back bends we can do you know oh no all right it would be also awesome. knows like a lullaby yeah but it'd be funny after shavasana you're like encore all right we're gonna come back and do this <laughs> next <laughs> flow <laughs> you're like wait a minute um I, you should try that sometime um Okay, so you we... guys definitely <clears throat> break off from the tra traditional yoga teachers, and we both kind of draw that. Like, mm -hmm. it's it's very attracting to take both of your classes. Yeah, Thanks. yeah, I think we do. I mean, I think we, we discussed this. Jamie and I have very different styles in teaching, but we just coincidentally have the same teacher. Yep. Um, and you know, even though we have different styles and we teach differently from our teacher, we definitely kind of took that influence of like being different from the mainstream, uh, and kind of incorporate that into our styles and in our classes. So it's definitely something that we have in common. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I want to I want to like say a piece about each of you. I don't know who to start with because they're <laughs> both of them. I think are going to be pretty interesting. Um, Let's just start with you. Okay. <laughs> Let's you're the go. One, you're the one that was nervous. So. <laughs> oh, good. So now just put me out on blast. Thanks, Justin. Oh, man. Um, Guess what Thursday's going to be like for you. Uh, <laughs> bring, bring it on. Um, it, so can you explain your job outside of yoga a little bit? It's, yeah. Sure. Yeah. So I work in the body donation program at UCSD's School of Medicine. So we are an we're an academic anatomical donation. So not for profit. We're not science <clears throat> care. We're not going to, you know, give your family money if you donate a loved one. Um, so um, we use our body donors primarily for medical education and for research purposes and not research in the way of oh i have this disease and i really want to donate my body to science so somebody else can benefit from it we're more whole body and using research and more like of uh, surgical devices and implementing new surgical techniques and so these some of our bodies are used in the new center for future surgery where there's all these robotic and laser surgeries um, being performed and experimented with so Again, not really looking for like causes of things or we don't do autopsies or anything like that. Um, but we do embalm our donors um, on site. And I'm in a mortuary school program now to earn my embalmer's license because I'm currently a licensed funeral director in the state of California. Nice. Yeah. And um, yeah, so if you uh, need so to. So when I die, I'm going to come to you. That would be great. I would love to have your body. Um, so is like a licensed funeral director different from like a licensed minister? Well, like I can just go online and like pay a $20 <laughs> fee and become a, you know. Be, and marry a, somebody. Marry somebody, <laughs> right? But you have to actually take a course to bury somebody. Well, you have to take a course and you have to take an exam mm -hmm. by that's issued or that's like governed by the California Funeral Bureau and to earn the funeral director's license. However, in the state of Colorado, you need not a license to embalm or be a funeral director. So good luck to you in Colorado. Wow. So anyone can do it. Yeah, that's that's wild. Yeah. <clears throat> so you had brought a heart, a uh, plasticized heart to mm -hmm. yoga, and that was cool. Um, people were like, couldn't figure out, like, you went to yoga and held a plasticized, is that right? Plasticized? Plastinated. Yeah, plasticated mm -hmm. um, heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, I have, like, awesome instructors. <laughs> like, I, don't, I get to do cool <laughs> shit, you know? Like, this is why I'm always, like, hyped on yoga, and that was that was cool. Um, 
And then you were like, once you were, you told me about the Beatles that eat all the flesh. And yeah, um, so um, first of all, the heart was not from UCSD. That was a gift given to me from okay. someone else. So, so no, I didn't yeah. remove that from <laughs> yeah. the property. Yeah, sorry about that. No, that's okay. <laughs> we're gonna cover um, just Beatles. want to make sure that yeah, I'm covered no, there. Yeah. Um, but yes, so it's a version of skeletoni- skeletonization of removing all the flesh from the bones to reveal just a beautifully articulated bone that hasn't been disarticulated manually mm. or hasn't been dissected or, or bleached. Or, yeah, something like that. Yeah. So it's a <laughs> wonderful way to um, use nature as it does if there was yeah. a body in the ground. Those scavengers come in and help the body decompose wow. and to turn back into other elements and so we have a colony of beetles that we can put certain specimens into their cage when necessary and have a really beautiful specimen on the backside. and we do um, sanitize and disinfect um, the bones when they come out so that they're safe for handling Mm -hmm. Um, but they haven't been embalmed or anything like that so there's no formaldehyde on them but just to make sure they're like the natural like the almost like hippie element aspect of yeah. it, right? Like that's yeah, totally like, uh, the organic, I guess. Uh, it is. Yeah. It's kind the of like way. yeah. It sounds like a band uh, or song. Mm-hmm. It sounds like a song like that I would write. <laughs> like all this you stuff should. that you're talking you about. You can come over. We'll take you on a little tour. You can get inspired. <laughs> uh, I, okay, so that's another thing too. Is like I don't know that I could go and handle like I don't. I mean, I've seen dead bodies like um, usually because of like. Um, the police or on a car accident or yeah. something like that. So um, I, I don't know if I could just go walk into it and like not. I don't I know. He, you could. Mm-hmm. I, I think I think it I would have. um it would freak me out. Yeah. I, I don't know. I want to be like tough and be able to handle yeah. this, but like I don't think I don't think I I think it would freak me out. It it um guts and and brain. I don't know. I just I'm like <laughs> well they're ah. not just laying around. <laughs> <laughs> well you know like I used to be like that too though. I, I used to be like, I I cannot see somebody else bleed or else I'd freak out. Yeah. Right? Um, but you know, the more and more you expose yourself to it, the more you get interested mm-hmm. in it. If that's your personality, well, and then like eventually, I'm like, yeah, I want to, I want to see more of it. But yeah, I used to be like, I could never see a dead body. I, I don't want to be even close to a dead body. Mm-hmm. But now it's like, yeah, like bring them on, and 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 that's it's, interesting. It's, you know, you, like you, you approach it from like a sense of curiosity, mm-hmm. um, and it, it's like it opens up an, a, a whole new field for you. It's yeah. not that I'm like squeamish, like blood. Oh, uh, like I, I'm always like. Blood. Oh, oh, we got to help this person because it's not like a normal situation, like a like a healthy situation. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So yeah, like, yeah. In, in this in this circumstance, it's they're there and it's not an aggressive. It's yeah. not like a you know like a negative. Um, <clears throat> right. They've chosen to be there. Yeah. Yeah. And so when, that when I was a kid, um, I lived pretty close to a hospital, but the back parking lot, and it was the when the emergency helicopters would land, oh. and we can hear them, and we'd get our bikes and just go like two blocks and just mangled bodies and I was like eight nine years old and just so fascinated with it dang yeah I remember and even my aunt a few months ago she was like I remember when you were a little kid all you would want to do is just say I want to do autopsies I want to do autopsies (laughs) like not even just I want to be a doctor I want to do autopsies so it's been in there for a really long time and it just was kind of latent for a while I want to do them controlled in an, an ethical way. But um, you are a huge horror movie fan. I love horror movies. Yeah. Which, oh, my gosh. I just is... went to see Society down at the Adams Avenue Theater last week. What is that? It's from 89. Um, it was released in the U.S. in 92. And a guy named Bruce, no, Brian Usna directed oh. it. And um, it's a commentary on, like, high society life in L.A., and at the end, it's just this incredible body horror. I will not give it away, but okay. wow. It is pretty funny, though, when, when you, like, around Halloween, you had, like, a Halloween-themed uh, yoga class. And Always. I remember people were like, like, one woman was like, I was scared. And I was like, it's just the Halloween song, which is a great song. It's a great song. <laughs> Why would I not start it with Halloween? I don't know. I was like, you guys are a little bit too soft. <laughs> I was like, come on. Well, um, I mean, somebody complained that my Thanksgiving class was too packed. And I was like, hmm. it's a donation-based yoga class for the food bank. And you're complaining that there's too many people wow. here. Way to give thanks. Yeah. Just like, <laughs> just like you have plenty of fans, you'll always have people complaining about something. Oh, always. yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Same always. with same with playing music. I mean, we oh, have people sure. yelling at us from the audience. I'm like, you paid money and you're like yelling shit at us. Yeah. Right. Um, totally. If, yeah. Well, 
it'd be funny to like kick kick them out because <laughs> I've, I've told people like get out like go out <laughs> go and like just give get your money back and get out of the, the venue like i don't want you here take your kid yeah, be funny get to be like, get out of this yoga i mean i guess you couldn't because i don't have anyone to answer to where like you know you are part of like a, a studio and you can't really do, tell yeah, someone to get out and it's your job that would yeah. be right. great uh that'd be great I mean, I think a lot of studios would <clears throat> back you up and, and, and support you if you were to kick out someone who's disruptive doing something or bad. something, yeah. Yeah, yeah, something unsafe or yeah. some, if they're if they're uh, being threatening to other students. Yeah. But yeah, just just to kick somebody up because you don't like them or you're, you're too by them <laughs> might not be might not be, you know, smiled upon. There, yeah. there was a class that I took and um, there was this gentleman uh, who with the I, jeans. Yeah. Were you there? <laughs> no, I told you about it. He, well, he, he, he was there before. Uh huh. I, he was there like a day before. Okay. And he went. So he had, yeah, he had jeans on. So like, that's weird. He's got like blue jeans on, you know, but whatever. Maybe he doesn't have sweats on. Or he like came because I, sometimes I might forget or whatever. Um, and he, um, he, he was like renting an apartment during the class. So like, so he was like getting phone calls. He's like, yeah, I'd like, I'd like to come by and, and he's like laying down on the mat. Like, I'd like to come by and, and, and see the apartment. How much While is it? is moving. And, and yeah, it was Sydney's class. I remember like oh people, gosh. I remember like watching her just being like, what the fuck is this guy doing? <laughs> like he completely answered. And then he like, she kind of was like, hey, you know, no calls. And then he made another call. And then he like made a call or got a call or something. And I was like, dude, this is crazy. Wow. Uh, it was interesting um, to me. So yeah, there's that. There's There are the people that should get kicked out. Yeah. And um, there are people who will kick themselves out that's too. That's true. I've, like, seen... I've, I've been in a class where um, one of my friends brought their friend who was a bodybuilder kind of guy uh, and uh he was always reticent to come to yoga but he decided that okay i'll give it a try this time and i think like 20 minutes through class all i heard was someone go y'all are fucking crazy and i <laughs> and i see a guy just like grabbing his mat and walking out why were sweating. you crazy well because like he like it, it was so hard for him so oh, hard you know? i know because they're if you're so buff you don't you yeah can't like move. Talk yeah. Yeah. In your arms yeah. Over yeah. Your yeah. i mean no i think way. like like in in any sport in any movement modality you, you have like things that you're really good at mm. right and then like you do you try something else even though you think like you're really fit yeah you try something else and it's just like of it course. requires yeah. like other physicality yeah and so he just wasn't ready for it he that's crazy it. i because yeah. i've seen i mean i think like uh i might be um giving myself too much credit but people i think trip out on on us sometimes or or me like the way i look or something and i remember like there was a, a buff dude kind of like sizing me up and and i mean you know like as, as a as a as a man in this world like it's um uh people like sometimes men are insecure about their sexuality like whatever i don't know like i felt like he was like like sizing me up you know like like i think he might have felt a little odd being at yoga and um and it was it was a it was a class that was all women and, and just me and him and I think he just assumed I was gay I guess and and it was such a weird vibe and I was like dude it's fine man like you could kick my ass you know <laughs> but but it, but I think he was tripping out because I could do all of this stuff that mm -hmm. he couldn't even get remotely close to and he was so so upset about it. It. Yeah. yeah and it was like a yeah. really strange thing and I was like it's totally fine dude like I. I I couldn't get to the point that he was at, you know, and, and, and I, whatever. That That's was like, like a natural ego thing, though. When somebody can't do something, they just get frustrated with it or. Like, yeah. Or like I was in the sauna the other day and I was listening to a bunch of violin music <clears throat> on my headphones. And this same thing, this buff dude walked in and I it was just violins. And he just I guess it's not the same thing, but. He was just, I could see his face restorating. He's like, fuck, I'm not going to listen to this shit for 20 minutes. <laughs> and just walked out of the sauna. Yeah. Okay. I mean, and I was like, cool. <laughs> fuck yeah, he's not in here anymore. That's right. <laughs> um, okay, so with you, though, the thing that, ha it's so crazy to me, because we'll go to class. Well, there's two things. So, so one is um, you always have everybody start laying down. And... I know what, what to expect and I'm, and I'm ready for it. And I think sometimes people don't, maybe they're not like, um, they haven't been to your class before or whatever. And like, they're kind of just like, what the hell is going on? And I, and I used to think this, like, what the fuck are we doing, dude? This is crazy mm -hmm. for 40 minutes. And then finally at the end, I'm like, oh, I think I'm, 
I kind of feel like I know what the hell I just did. And then of course, like when I leave or the next day, I'm like, Oh, now I know it. Nam just made me do Mm -hmm. because you, you approach the, the practice in such a unique, um, way. I mean, it's not a flowing class, so it's like more, uh, instructive and, and, but you get into stuff that I'm like, what is that that's hurting today? You know, like, not that I want it, you know, I feel, it feels good. Like, you're yeah, like, yeah. oh yeah, I feel, I feel sore. I feel like I got a workout of something that I didn't even know existed on my body. And that's like the most interesting mm-hmm. thing. Cause I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, so my approach is like, I just like, I, I figure something that's really interesting to do or some, something that's complex and compound to do. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a pose. It's just like something to do with your body to control it. And then we start lying down because it's usually the easiest way to do the thing. And so I just kind of start from the ground up and teach you some very fundamental basics of how to do the thing and from the ground up, from, from lying down. And then you, you know, you sit down, you do the same thing sitting down and then you do all fours, do the same thing. And then as you go through class, you get more and progressively harder, more complex, but you're still doing the same thing, the same thing, but yeah. in a different, in a different way. Position. Right. And so eventually you're doing this, the thing in a very complex and most compound way possible. Um, while still controlling the rest of what you're doing too, which is which, but which is unfortunate for a lot of people that go and want a, a, a certain thing that they think yoga is, and when you go to your class, it's not that. Right. And and I and I, I like that a lot. I think that maybe some people might be like, this this is, because I, I mean I've I've thought to myself like, what the hell are we doing? Mm-hmm. And then and then I'm like, oh shit, that's what we're doing. Yeah. And it's like the payoff, you know, because. Mm-hmm kind of like with how we write music and stuff too it's like there's all this weird shit happening and then the payoff is like you know when, when the song is when it kicks in you get it you know and it's like oh that's what we were like building up to you know and i i think that's such a unique way way to approach it um so that is like uh probably the most um interesting style um, to me but also you've you've made a couple comments that really um resonated with me and I, I, I might not, I might be wrong here. So if I am, just please correct me. But you, you had stopped saying um, namaste for, for a reason. Can, can you? T- yeah. Um, well, you know, the, so if you're in the yoga sphere at all, there's this debate of whether to say namaste at all. Because uh, from a South Asian standpoint, you don't actually say namaste at the end of a class. Or you don't say namaste. Because here in the West, we think namaste means, you know, goodbye. It's a goodbye kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but not many people actually use namaste. Namaste is more of a greeting. Like, it, it, hello, hey, hello right? greeting. Yeah, 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 hello, namaste. Um, so for me, it's not like I choose to not say namaste because of it. Um, it just became kind of a, a habit for me to say it at the end of class. And just like everything else I teach, I, I try not to get you to do something that's out of habit. Yeah. I try to do, have you do something that's intentional with meaning and with intention. Uh-huh. Uh, so it's the same thing. I don't say namaste because I don't want to say it out of habit. I just want to say something that's intentional instead. Yeah, so yeah. you say peace. And so you say peace, yeah. Which seems very relevant in in modern times, like right yeah, now, which absolutely. is um, un- unfortunate in some certain circumstances. But um, it's such a trip because I, I think um, maybe your approach is so unique in the sense that both of you actually, because again, when, when I'm telling someone, oh, I go to yoga, and they're, and they're like, and they're thinking of this like sort of bourgeois, like, um, mm-hmm. What is the company uh, like Lululemon or, you know, like they're, I think they're, they have this perception of, of this thing. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm like, no, it's it's like not that thing, because um, if people know us and like what we're into, like for me, when I perform m- music, it's it's it is very physically um, uh, intense and it's it's almost absurd. And, you know, uh, physically, but also like my voice, I, I I've been working on like my core and stuff because I want to be able to perform better and like articulate and do things musically better which yoga obviously is everything so um it helps in every 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 way possible so i think like when people would trip out um like our uh, our old bandmate who passed away gabe serbian got very much into yoga and very much into like more specifically into breathing techniques and and that would help him because he would be this he was this insane um drummer like one of the best and and people would see him perform and he would he would perform so intense that he would vomit um and so he was uh and and people liked it you know uh, and and like (laughs) some people thought it was cool Uh, he didn't you know and he was very frustrated and was like i gotta figure this out i gotta try to do these breathing techniques and i was so we were always like kind of before he passed away we were very 
we were all connecting on this other way. Like aside from music, we were connecting on this other on level. That breath book. Uh, yeah, this the um, if you want to hype that book, what uh, yeah, James Nestor. Yeah, yeah, which is crazy. You guys, yeah. I haven't read it, but I've. It's great. Really good. He turned me onto it, and then we started taping our mouths shut at night and like mm-hmm. chewing this mm-hmm. gum that's like super hard and like all these crazy things. Um, so when when we say stuff like that's why I was like we should get uh, our favorite yoga instructors on this on this podcast because we always talk about it and I think it's such an important thing that translates to other parts of of the world um, and 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 even like you know when when I'm driving now I don't get mad <laughs> it's much you know and I'm like yeah. this is great uh, because uh, the music that we make uh, me specifically m- more so than him but me because he's in a cumbia band that's fun and rad but for me I'm just like in the nasty hardcore and 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 like kind of thrash and it's so it, uh, and it, it's seemingly negative and like mean and nasty and I'm like no it's actually coming from a place of love mm-hmm. um, it's not uh, this like nihilistic. Um, you know, like the quintessential, like Sid Vicious, like swastika t-shirt wearing jerk, you mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. junkie yeah. or whatever. Like, no, it's very, um, uh, very, very uh, pointed and, 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 you know, focused uh, on, on this progressive thing. And so the yoga stuff helps me, but you would bring in a lot of um, interesting points that, that I kind of was like resonating on. And, and I think that was, um, I think that was really cool. Um, the, the, the choice to not say namaste i thought was like maybe uh because i felt like maybe you were saying or uh, you weren't saying this but like i took it as like culture like cultural appropriation cultural, is, yeah is, and okay yeah so, it's definitely so, part of it yeah okay. yeah in, in the sense like cultural appropriation you know in, in one sense is you it's know, not gonna work taking on the practice of a culture without understanding that practice yes right so if i'm going to sit here and say namaste at the end of class without really understanding or having an intentional with with why i'm saying it then there's no reason why i should say it sure but most people just say it because it's, it's like that's just what you say at the end of class of course and that would be cultural appropriation so for me it's like i'm choosing not to say it and not to appropriate that culture because well it doesn't mean what it means to me that, that it would mean to the culture so of so, course so you know I and just, also maybe the, our bastardized west western westernization of yoga is is becoming something different and mm-hmm. and i and i i i don't mean disrespect to the roots of of the practice i i just think we live in a different world like it's it's like when people are arguing the <laughs> the constitution it's like we we didn't have assault rifles then you know yeah. so it's a whole other uh, that's a whole other thing but um it's kind of like well yoga is different now we have a we live in a different world um so we have to utilize it for different things and i think it's helping people kind of like how you uh, mentioned earlier before we started the the prisoner um prison yoga project prison yoga project which is something that is uh, i mean i'm assuming it's it's unheard of until like the last before the last decade maybe like i i don't know if it was like it hasn't been around that as long yeah, as it, it hasn't should be. been around that long but um it's it's very much in the culture now where it's it's prison yoga project is just one company one group organization that does it but there's other national companies that that offer uh yoga to incarcerated folk and yoga to uh to actually the 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 counselors and the 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 guards and the folks who actually work Uh, at the prison as well um to treat to treat everybody yeah yeah yeah. wow that's great that that's such an interesting thing and so i think like the the I guess the approach or the the way that you um, go at the practice is, in in the world that we live in, the community that we live in, is very effective. And and same with you. Like I I really appreciate like your jokes. <laughs> <laughs> you have the best jokes, and uh, and also like no your words. obsession with horror movies and stuff. For me, I feel like if if it seems like cooler like i feel like oh yeah this is like my friend that i can hang out with and like talk shit and like go and like we can talk about the texas chainsaw massacre and not have to talk about you know i don't know like um this i don't know i don't want to be negative i'm trying i'm trying to be i don't know like for Mm -hmm. me too like i have i don't thrive in the self-confidence area but when i teach yoga i feel like i can bring my whole self uh-huh. And it's interesting because there are many more people in that room that don't know me. And maybe that's the comfort of it. They don't know me. If they don't like it, they don't have to come back. Mm-hmm. Um, so maybe it's some kind of that for me. I don't know. But it's just <clears throat> I feel safe and I feel like and it's so fun to teach <laughs> and to see people do things that they didn't think they could do with their body. 
And like, I just love the human body so much. But the fact that you're so, having so much fun makes people, yeah, helps people do that thing. Well, thank you. It for is so that. much fun. Oh, it like doesn't that. feel tense. Thank you. Thanks for saying that. That's very nice. But yeah, and it's just so fun for me. I just uh. absolutely adore it. And so I let out my yeah. terrible jokes and the most inappropriate times yeah, and, great. you know, talk about horror movies or I like go up by somebody and like whisper something yeah. stupid into their ear and then, <laughs> yeah. you know, like just break the whole it's back row. It's so hard to do but, like plank and laugh, like yeah. holding plank and laughing your ass off. It's really hard. Yeah. Um, Half Moon's another one of my favorites that I just like to crack <laughs> jokes in. <laughs> um, but that's one thing that's really interesting because both of you have this in insane amount of confidence when you're, when you're, this mm -hmm. is another thing with music too, because um, I, I recently saw this um, show and um, the opener was um, very, um, uh, they didn't seem very confident. They were, they were performing great. They were very interesting, but they were not confident. And I, and I, and I felt bad for the performer and it was awkward. And I think the audience probably thought it was fine, but I'm very critical and I, and I wanted it to be better. I was like, you're at this sold out show at the observatory. Like you're just kind of shit in the bed. Um, but so when you guys when you guys teach, there's it seems there's so much confidence. So when there's like new new students and or new sorry new instructors and, and you, I, you it takes a while like but I'm kind of like oh this the instructor's like screwing up or like and it's not a big deal I'm not judging them but I but there isn't there isn't the level of confidence where I where like I get out I'll be taken out of the practice for a minute because I'm like oh they're they're uncomfortable hmm. and they don't they feel weird they just made a, <clears throat> the wrong comment. Yeah, I don't. I I think your analogy with the performer is very similar to ours in the sense that like any other person who would show up might see them as being confident and and giving a good show. And because your kind of experience in in this role in this profession, you can see the nuances of of what they're doing. You can see that their 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 self consciousness is coming through. Well, I think we as yoga teachers, um, we can we can go to like I can go to Jamie's class. And I can oftentimes, you know, n notice when she's very confident or when she's not confident. Or I can go to another t uh, teacher's class, whether they're new or not, and still see those nuances because, like, you don't see the behind the curtain of the course. way that we do, right? Yeah. And we don't see the behind the curtain the, the way that you do. Yeah. Um, so it's very much like in the eye of the beholder kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But also, Jamie, you've been like, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing today. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, I would have no – I mean, I don't know what you're talking about. That was awesome. You know, so, so it's like there's the confidence where you're just like – I mean, not that you phone it in, I, I but mm -hmm. but we all phone it in sometimes. But even when you phone it in, you're you still have a level of confidence. You know how to do the thing. Like I might not always have like, oh, I want to go to this pose today. Mm -hmm. So it's like I don't really know where we're going, but I know I'm gonna get you somewhere, and it's gonna be fun and safe. That's so cool. And that's you know, and that's just comes with time. Yeah. And doing this for so long and practicing in my own body and just like, oh, I did this thing and it it's, was fun. Let's try that. It's almost like <clears throat> like a guitar, like freestyling a song. Like I might not know what I'm doing, but if I know I'm in the C key, then I know E will connect with C and I know all these other notes mm -hmm. that way. And then I know mm -hmm. which notes will not fuck with C. So right. don't go there. <laughs> right, right. And just That's kinda, exactly it, yeah. That's exactly um, yeah. Heather is great at yeah. Just doing that. Yeah. She will yeah. just like, what do you guys want to do? Yeah. yeah. And she'll take well, 15 then, recommendations. She's like, so, okay. And you're just I like, know. at the end, you're like, damn, we did yeah. all that shit. Yeah. How'd she do that? I always trip out on that because I'm like, why are you asking? Because so Heather's mm -hmm. an instructor at the at, at Pilgrimage and, 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 and she's also one of my favorites too. But she'll say, what do you guys want to do? And then it'll be like, Hips. hips and back yeah. and, and the next thing you know you're like you just said the whole body like why did you ask yeah. you know and right. I and I, I, I I'm like why do you I mean it's cool I guess because then people get what they want but it without a doubt and she's got the Sunday I always go to her Sunday one it's like always a sold out I gig know. you know like um whatever uh mix of people but yeah it, but but it's always like it's really funny because I She'll ask people, and I always want to say something weird, like, what do you want to work on? I'm like, brain, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> like I want to stretch out my Left brain. kidney. <laughs> no, well, you know, like, I want to stretch out my mind or something, like, just, like, to kind of throw a, a joke, but also, like, let's just do this. Like, it'll be cool. Whatever happens, happens, you know? I mean, mm -hmm. I do go there, and I'm like, I, I want these parts to be worked on more than others, but, like, I, you're the instructors. Mm -hmm. You lead me. I don't... You know, it's like asking people to play a song. I just want the band to play what they want to play. I want you guys to do it. I go to your classes because I'm like, this is the mm -hmm. shit, like the best ones. So like, it should be um, 
fine. Yeah, I, I you know, if you teach like so for me, I teach twenty two classes a week. <laughs> That's wow. crazy. That's a, which is a lot. Wait, how does that work? Uh, like, well, I, I have some classes are back to back to back. I yeah. have some privates. Um, how many I, like in a, how much the mo- is the most in one day? Uh, most in one day is five. Wow, well, five classes a day. Um, it used to be six. That's a lot. But uh, you know, it's, yeah. yeah, it's a lot. But it's it's sustainable the way right. that I, I, I set up. That's good. But so to teach that many classes, um, you know, I have lesson plans and I have ideas of what I want to do each week. But sometimes, you know, just like you just want to show up and just kind of like mm-hmm. ad lib and do whatever. Yeah. So it's nice to ask the two students, hey, what do you want to work on today? What do you request? Uh, and then it's it's like an it's, an it's an extra little challenge that keeps you kind of motivated. You. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As the instructor. Yeah, because wow. right. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. get to be really creative yeah. on the yeah. spot. Yeah. So it's huh. like it's a, it's basically like getting my creative juices flowing. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm, I'm sure like you do the same thing where like you can play the same songs over and over again. Yeah. But like sometimes you just want to jam. I don't really jam, but but, uh, but, but it's not I right. do. Yeah. I get yeah. it. Yeah, you do. Okay, yeah. Um, so Luke does. You know, I was spy- I was pointing to Luke. If mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah. he knows how to jam. I always I sometimes I'm like I get a little pissed off with it when someone's like lower back, and I'm like ah oh, you lifted something heavy this morning and now you got fucking back pain and now you want to like it. I'm like so I kind of see it as like that. Well, one time I went to I had lower back pain. And went to, I couldn't even barely move and went to a gentle yoga class. And I forget who it was that I told them. And I shit you not, she directed the whole thing around scene, you, around me. <laughs> and I walked out of there like, oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. You know, so yeah, I feel it. But sometimes when you, <clears throat> like it's a lot, like your guys' classes are kind of not with my time. But it's like he says, I totally look forward to going to the classes. And if somebody had like lower back pain and I'm like wanted to dictate the class around them after I made my whole day to go to your class, I'm going to be pissed. <laughs> <laughs> like, That's not the point of yoga, though, right? <laughs> you got to be open to it. Yeah, yeah, I'm new. On, this, uh, <laughs> on the same lines, though, like it's, like it's, it's very like universal, global, communal in the sense that like, Whenever someone asks for, like, let's say, hips, or if a teacher decides we're mm-hmm. new hips today, I mean, what's the difference between a student asking for hips and a teacher doing doing hips? Totally. There's really no, nothing different yeah. other than the person deciding, right? Mm-hmm. And everybody else in the class will get a benefit from anyways. Mm-hmm. So whether you know you come to class and a student asks for hips, or I'm, I come in and say, hey, what are you yeah. doing hips today? You're still gonna get the benefits of it. Are you getting this? Yeah, yeah okay. totally. Right? Yeah, <laughs> just like just and like, I'm recording it too. Yeah. <laughs> right? So just like everybody else, like you know, we, we all sit around and we're all kind of living semi sedentary lives. And even if you're not and you're you're a- active, you're still gonna need some hip stuff. You need some shoulder stuff. You yeah. still need some spinal stuff. It's just like movement is great for the body, right. and uh, you know, you, you just move and mm-hmm. everybody's gonna feel good either way as long as you're not pushing it. But um, I don't think it matters who decides what to do. Mm-hmm. I think it's just like yeah, no, your I perception it. of it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And like I even went to not right, at the totally. studio, but I went to a gentle class on Sunday f- with a teacher who I know and she teaches over in Coronado, at just a little private group kind of. And they're all like in their 80s, you know, and then I walked in and I was kind of like and some, one of the older women had asked for a restorative. And I'm like, That's not, I thought it was gentle. I wanted a little bit more movement, uh, you know, but then like this beautiful restorative practice. And I was like, that's what I actually needed. So sometimes even when I go to a class with a certain expectation, and I met with something mm-hmm. else, I'm like, oh, maybe that's what I really needed to have oh. today. Maybe I really needed not what I thought. So, you know, it can, I get where you're coming from. And next time you're in class, I'll ask what you need. But, um, <laughs> no, don't. You know, sometimes it's, you know, it's if kind I'm of walking. a surprise. To... I know, I like to like not know. When, I, when mm-hmm. I'm when at your class, I'm like, I do not know what we're doing. This is, yeah. and I like that. I'm like, I'm just sitting there trying to figure it out. Like, what are we doing here? Question for you, Nam. Does Justin use props in your class? No. He does because I make him use them. Okay. Yeah. Like, like, Great. It's not like we don't use props for like modifications. Right, right, right. We use props for specific like, reasons. Right. Right, right, to, right. To challenge you, so he does use it every now class. and again. I'll have things like that, and yeah. I'm like, you really need them. Today. I'm not opposed to him, but and it, and some people like think it's like, oh, you're too good, but like I kind of freak out when there's like, hey, that block's been up in someone's crotch, or like you know, and I don't want to put my face on it, you yeah. know, like or like they've been sitting on it, like I'm like, I don't want to put my face on that. I'm sorry, and it's I know I just like to give a hard time. Okay, <laughs> um, I should bring my own. I just don't, but um, 
Um, I had this like weird, um, my introduction to yoga was very, very strange. Um, my mom was like, you should go. You're stressed out all the time. And I had alopecia. I was like losing my hair and shit. And so I went to this gym by where she lived and it was, it was, um, very, um, they're good instructors, uh, but it was very one dimensional. And I, and I kind of like, that was my introduction and I got into it. And then I remember like, um, for some reason, my mom was like, oh, this person I met is giving these like private ones downtown and they invited us. And it was and it was such a trip because she was um, like she was very Christian and she was um, against like she was against saying namaste because it was like not Christian. And I was like, whoa. And that was like my that was got me on the trajectory of like understanding, like, you know, cultural appropriation. But like from like a, that was like I was like, you're doing this weird thing, lady. Uh, and it was kind of a trip. And so. uh um, I'm an atheist. So, uh, anyhow, I was just like tripping out on that aspect of it, um, being brought to my attention early on in yoga and being like, Oh, now I see this, like sort of, um, the spiritual aspect to it, you know, and I, and I already knew enough about it, but it was just like a really strange way to kind of dive into it. Um, so what was my point in that? I don't know. I think I lost my point. <laughs> well, I think what, what that brings up for me is like, like a lot of, students and a lot of people um, are afraid of Sanskrit which is the language of mm -hmm. yoga which is where Namaste comes from um, but like you would go to a ballet class and, and, and refuse to say stuff like jeté and plié oh, yeah. 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 right mm -hmm. and you wouldn't go to like a, a, a French culinary class and like refuse to use the culinary language sure it, 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 it honors the, the tradition oh. of, the, of the thing yeah. right so it's not so much like a spiritually or religious thing that you're doing you're just you know Paying respect to the culture that it came from, yeah. or paying respect to where 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 it originated from. So, if you're not going to to use the language, then you're you're not actually experience the whole you're experiencing the whole thing. Of course, yeah. I I wasn't at attacking it like that. Right. I was just saying that um, these different instructors' perspectives, yours or this Christian lady's, had a, had a different reason for not doing certain things. Sure. Um, but I I I I completely agree what with what you're saying and and I even find myself oddly placed in in the mix as well because um I feel like um uh, I'm a weird white mutt it's like it is still cultural appropriation like I, I'm very grateful because I I get a discounted rate at the studio and I and I appreciate that but I um it is a very like cl class sort of like privilege you know because um someone was trying to get me to um I, I, I don't think I could teach yoga because um, I don't know any of the Sanskrit. I don't know why I don't, I just like tune it out and I don't learn it and I should know it all by now. I go, I go seven days a week and I, and I've gone for like over 10 years, you know, yeah. so I should know this shit, but I don't. Um, but someone was like, you should teach yoga um, at, at down in Logan to these, to this, like um, it was these people that were part of this like socialist um, workers movement and they were all, um, um, well, the other thing is too is I don't speak Spanish, so I was like, I, I don't know if I can actually like instruct because um, I I can't speak Spanish and I don't think they speak English very well and I think it, that would be a huge problem, but it was a it was it was for free and I was like, oh, these working class people who work these like pretty gr grueling jobs really do need some mm -hmm. yoga with, uh, you know, because I, they can't come though, the people that were that that I would have been instructing could not afford to go to pilgrimage or mm -hmm. most studios mm -hmm. to get to see, to come to you guys you know there and so that was something that i i really um honed in on and it, and it was something that i kind of kept with me for a while and i and i the, the privileged aspect of it you know and, and I, so when I, I i do feel like when i'm like i go to yoga people are like you you know they they have this perception of 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 what that is um i you know like you're cruising up in your Tesla, or, I don't know. I don't want to judge anyone, you know, to each their own. But you know what I'm saying? Like, there's a perception of it. And I, and White I, privilege I, kind I, of stuff. Totally, style. yeah, yeah. And I, um, I want to avoid that as much as possible. Yeah, I think in San Diego, though, there's there's a huge variety and of accessibility for yoga. Mm -hmm. So even though you might not see it, there, is, there are a lot of teachers and a lot of places that offer yoga at a either a discount rate yeah. or a free rate or, mm -hmm. or they, they offer donation classes to, so that it makes it accessible to everybody. Sure. Whether they're, they're, you know, whether they can't afford it financially or even like they don't have time to go to an actual class, mm -hmm. then um, there are classes at different hours where like people can actually take it. Cause I mean, like for me, like I, because I teach 21 class a day 
you know, 22 classes a day, and I have not a day, sorry, a week. A week. <laughs> <laughs> a day. That'd, that'd be a lot. I was just yeah. waiting for you yeah, to correct yourself. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> 22 classes a week, and I have I, I have a kid, um, so I can't take yoga classes very often. Um, so it's like I'm just lucky that I'm a yoga teacher, so I can move my body on my own and teach myself. But yeah. you know, there are some people who might be able to afford it, but they don't have the time to do it because of they course, have families yeah. and stuff like that. So it's not just like financial limitations there's also time Time. and distance and all that stuff too yeah there there was the one the funniest thing like i i'd already like been going to your class but i think the first time we actually like spoke uh sort of like outside of of just yoga it was like during a lot of the george floyd protests Mm -hmm. and there was a skateboard one and you're like can i bring my one wheeler (laughs) yeah yeah. (laughs) i was like i don't skate really anymore but i was like that's so cool and it took me a minute i was like what's a one wheeler you know and i mean the yeah those things are rad i've never been on one but like i was like i was like oh man you should be able to go with anything like we're we're here for like a a a really important social justice moment you know a movement and and you should be able to go with what however many wheels you want you know (laughs) no wheels at all you know but i was like oh that guy's so cool um i I, it was it just it, it like really um, painted a, the, like a very a- accurate picture of you and, and I was like oh that's that guy's so that's awesome cool. thank you yeah um so there's a thing that's funny because I, I I trip out um like when I go to yoga and like occasionally those there's like there's so like in the in the like I identify with like punk like the the not like punk rock but like the culture of punk I don't know if Luke does so much more like Hip hop, right? And like, I mean, whatever. I anyhow, I identify more as like as a, as like an identity thing. So like, at times I'll go to yoga and I'll be like, I'll see someone with like, um, a shirt that has a band on it, and like, hmm, like there's a weirdo too over there. Like ah, and it's cool to like kind of connect in in, in that in that. And I'm like, ah, oh, I'm so glad that like, um, people of of our sort of like pedigree are are like becoming used to going to yoga now it's really nice um well yeah i mean our teacher jason he's huge at the punk yeah 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 he, yeah, he like when he Wait, was you younger. two have a teacher yeah yes yeah oh, we had the right. same teacher actually yeah yeah, yeah. 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 So, like teacher training and they had to learn from someone right yeah. oh okay right yeah and the, he was huge in the punk and back, back in the day too mm-hmm. he, yeah. he was a skateboarder he was in you know in the the the, the punk scene everywhere and and uh yep. you wouldn't you, you wouldn't know it from just what seeing now yeah. looking at him right? now. but yeah, yeah. It, like there's there's a lot uh, there's a lot of you in, 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 in <laughs> there yeah. are well yeah. mike flynn uh, another instructor yeah. like because i when i first met mike he was at uh ginseng yoga or something mm-hmm. yeah and he, and he was like we know each other and he was like referencing like unbroken and all these mm-hmm. bands that we grew up with and i was like oh my gosh we went to shows together like 20 <laughs> years ago this is crazy um you know and so so and then i and then i inherently wanted to go to his classes because i was like he's on the same level as me you know right and i feel like we're on the same level as well but he was like on this level like right away right off the bat i was like oh we get each other and this i feel comfortable sure um because we, you know, we like our podcast. We were trying to get sponsors, and I don't really know what that even means. Because um, we're not, I mean, we're in a capitalist society, so we, but we, we don't. Well, there's ethical capitalism. Like for instance, uh, Earthquaker Devices, um, the pedal company, gives all of our guests pedals, and that they're so great to everybody. And so we, we're always like, who can we get as sponsors? And I was like, oh, we should ask Pilgrimage of the Heart. That was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> pilgrimage of the heart and um you know i think that um and i'm not criticizing um the head honcho there or anything but they're just like oh no 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 this is weird you guys like have satanist and, and like all this weird <laughs> shit on your podcast and i get it you know it's not like yeah. uh, market marketable or marketably uh in tune or in line with each other in, in in an obvious way but i wish i could be like actually i feel like pilgrimage of the heart and Colton culture podcasts are pretty much on like a, the, a very similar yeah. level. Um, you know, because now like when we go there, um, like we did this benefit t-shirt, um, uh, with, with this friend, with this friends of ours, rock will repeat. And, um, and like John Malley was like, Oh my gosh, I've ordered one of your shirts, you know, or like, uh, we filmed. She's we, great. There she's too, great. By the way. Yeah. yeah. Um, and she's on the level too, like, you know, in the weird cool shit and like, um, and then like just little things will kind of, trickle in and 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 um i i really appreciate the studio and and all all of the instructors um i just wish it i wish we could be like yo everybody you know in the in the other strange subcultures like come and check this shit out you know um well it's funny because it used to be that that 
yoga it was more cult and culture and, than than mainstream in like air quotes right yeah and yeah. yeah so yeah. it's like it, it's 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 just interesting that now that yoga is more mainstream we're like oh no you know like well yoga you know, has kind of become like the normal yeah like, it's a normal yeah, now but yeah. it, when it started here in the west it was like it was very much Weird. you know yeah alternative culture and and and, and other of course yeah and and but also all those things like yoga for me was always like and associated with like organic farming and 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 being like healthy and those are like the hippie kind of stuff and like that's all um you know woo woo new agey weirdo stuff to a lot of people still but um i mean we're in like we're in we're in california like it's cool here you know go to the midwest and they'd be like nah there's no there's no fucking way like, right yeah you know, like yeah. i can't get my family in <laughs> oklahoma <laughs> yeah in indiana Our, there's no way yeah you know it's like there's no way it's happening um so it is it is a cultural interesting uh shift that's happening um yeah i mean even like uh i a friend of ours who's part of the satanic temple that we work with went <laughs> to yoga with us oh yeah we took her and it was so yeah. funny to like think like oh there's this like you know she's like i don't know what the technical term of, of her of her place and with the, the the satanic temple is but i was like oh she's going they came here to work on a record and um and like here she is going to going to pilgrimage of the heart what did she think of it uh she loved i mean she already practiced yoga, oh, okay, okay. you know mm -hmm. but it was just funny because i wanted like i wanted all the other people there to be like this lady is like a satanist you know yeah. like ja, ha, ha, like jokes on you or whatever like, yeah, like she went to a few of them with us <laughs> yeah but they have like <clears throat> satanic yoga yeah out in like salem and they have like heavy metal yoga which i never mm -hmm. really understood i was like why would you do that um mm. the, the the beat like the bpm of like uh, metal music to, to mm. yoga would not work but i think it's just a bunch of people with the same ideas outside of yoga yeah like drunk coming yoga together maybe. yeah drunk yeah. yoga <laughs> i'll drink wine i'll drink wine and practice at, at home and it's the best there you go <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, like when I was like a teenager, I, I, I listened to metal a lot, and and I remember listening to metal because like it was like a safe outlet for my like how I felt and my emotions. Of course, right. And so even like going to metal show shows, like from the outside, it looks violent because you see the mosh pits. But like the mosh pits were like a safe place for you to vent your frustration, mm -hmm. your aggression, right? And so like yoga is a safe place for you to like express your emotions, express what's going what's going mm -hmm. on, and let go of it. Totally. So I, I think metal yoga. Kind of makes sense in the sense <laughs> that, you know, like, you 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 get a safe space to just experience that in, in your body as well. Well, I always trip out on like when people play like have playlist in yoga and there's a BPM and I'm like, oh, it's just weird. Or I'm like paying attention to the beat or the riff and I'm like, I don't want to do that. You know, yeah. like I don't Which think is why you, I don't play. Music. Yeah, I know, and yeah, I really yeah. appreciate that. Yeah. I don't even listen oh, to music. Sorry, I know, I have like 290 <laughs> playlists or something. Um, I'm not criticizing <laughs> what okay, you play. You can. Well, I'm not though, but the, but I but I do think that is like an extra thing that I'm focusing on. I'm like, oh, this song, which is that. interesting too, because I have other students that are like, I love that you play music because it helps drop me into the practice. Well, so, so most again, people, well, a lot of people listen to music and they they you know like you hear a lot of people like they only listen to the vocals or the only you know, and I'm mm -hmm. like, for me, when I I I. And I don't know if this is like a good or bad thing, but when I hear a song, I start picking apart like, what's mm -hmm. that and what's this? I can't like enjoy it like uh, a. a a regular, a regular person, a regular. I guess. You know, so so I see why why it would be different. Um, I like tones. Um, I sometimes, if I'm at home, I just play like just violin tones, mm -hmm. <clears throat> or I play a breathing app to where it's mm -hmm. like inhale. Mm -hmm. If it's all set, like hey, I'm gonna do box breathing, it'll have a tone for inhale, a tone for hold, a tone for exhale. Oh, on the that's same nice. Tone. That's what that does. So yeah, oh. and. Um, I like that. I I like your silence in there because you're more of like the body, like physio. When I take your class, I picture myself as just like on Hellraiser, the no skin. <laughs> it's just like you because I can feel I can see this muscle going and I really see it. So there's no point in having the music. You study your own body like a like a t cadaver. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Yeah. And that's you how that, huh? I, I, do, <laughs> I do a lot of running. And that's how I see when I'm running, I can feel like everything. And that, that's how I see myself yeah. like that. And your class is 
is so much intense i think it does kind of need it needs the music because if it was if there was no music in there at all mm. it would just you would just then i would probably start like, singing and it would be terrible. Even, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it is it is interesting because when when there is no music for me and you're going down this crazy path and i say this like in the best way i don't I mean, this is not critical at all criticism like when i'm like what the fuck are we doing but I want to have mm. the no distraction of a song. I want to be like, whoa, this is crazy that he's having us do this thing. Yeah, I, I think one of the main differences between Jamie's class and my class is like, you go to Jamie's class, you get a really great experience and you mm-hmm. feel something out of it, right? Whether like, it, like you said, they're fun, right? Uh-huh. And with my classes, they're more like introspective, like educational, where like you come and like you learn something about. But they're fun too. Yeah. The fun is like a such a strange term. Mm-hmm. It's more I, technical. Like, he's way more technical than I am. Yeah. And, like, right, you're like, oh, I worked my piriformis <laughs> and, yeah. like, nothing uh-huh. else today. And, uh-huh. like, I know that now and I know what that muscle does. I know where it is. I know how to stretch it. I know how to strengthen it. And I know mm. how to manipulate it or whatever it might be. Where mine is a little bit more big picture, a little bit of a more of, like, the gross sure. as opposed to the mm. subtle. Yeah. But fun- like, you, you heard class, like, you might come out of it not remember anything you did but you yeah. know that you had fun you, and you know you had an experience and you, you know that you enjoyed it you got a workout because yeah. right. the word fun is very weird too because people like think like i play music it's fun and 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 i yeah it is fun but like i i think like especially when we go back to like the sort of ethics of maybe punk or weird or weird music or any kind of music like you're creating something to to um be it, it's you're creating something oh, i feel like such a pretentious jerk saying this but like you create this like piece of art or this music for it's like so you can expel or like communicate or something do do this thing to survive mm-hmm. like it's not like this is fun yeah you know you're like no we made this because we're in this insane world this like kind of mean world very mean world and we're trying to like function and live an empathetic human being so we need to create this thing so like i go to yoga and i get my ass handed to me by by jamie or i go to your class and i and i'm like what the hell just happened and, and it, it's it's fun but it's not fun i don't know like that's not the term i would use um it's ne- necessary I, I think you know like for survival and that sounds like so um vital or something but like it really is something like it helps me survive like it helps me function as a human being same there, yeah yeah meditation and yoga have saved my life i can't i, I can't have a meditate. different perspective on on the classes whether it's jamie or mine but you you might have a different one you, you let me know but I, I feel like um the way that that we teach it we in terms of survival and, and dealing with everything that's in the world um we kind of just give you like an hour of just not having to deal with that stuff yeah and just think about you know the small stuff like your, you know, what's happening in your body or mm-hmm. the stuff that that you're doing with jamie and and, and laughing and and, and Having, you know, like fun, yeah, it is like fun. the conventional yeah. kind of fun, right? Yeah. And so, like, it's the hour of just like not having to mm-hmm. to deal with that stuff, and like knowing like mm-hmm. that's not going to change whether you do something about it or not in this class. Just an hour, of just like letting go, mm-hmm. and then being better prepared to deal with it. But I look afterwards. forward to going to it, yeah. not because it's going to be like this is going to be fun. I mm. look forward because I'm like this is going to be good. Yeah, it's going to mm-hmm. be tuned. I, I hear it all the time, whether it's another instructor or you or you or you. It's always like tune in because everything out there is going to be there the minute the class is over. I know. Yeah. It's going to hit you back, but here just tune out with it. And I love just the connection of just the body, just connecting with it for an hour. But yeah, the minute I get back here, it's just, yeah. it's all back. And I'm lucky just to be able to have a peaceful walk. Yeah. yeah, and the hopes is that like you're you're a little more prepared to deal with this stuff. Yeah, class, totally. Right? You can see it on a different plane yeah. too. It's just like mm-hmm. I don't feel so thrown into it. I can kind of just um, separate myself and like kind of like form my like actions or my opinions to actions to towards anything in yeah, I, 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 it's called like it's more like you're you're learning to respond versus react yeah. to mm-hmm. stuff. Right? Like my mat has always been such a refuge because I can put down all the other shit that's going on and just be in my body. When you're taking mm-hmm. the class, but there's... also when I'm teaching, like I was oh. having a pretty shitty day yesterday, mm-hmm. and I, I was, I was in it, and when I got home, I was out of it. 
Huh. Like even teaching because I get to be uh, so present in that moment that all the other shit goes oh, away yeah. too. Yeah. And I'm looking at you uh, and you and I'm connecting with people and I am able to see people connect the dots in their mm. own mind and in their own body and to have like that aha moment and just to appreciate that this is the time we have. I make so many plans for mm. when I get out of school, mm. when I can do this, mm. but this is the time that I have. And like teaching yoga, practicing yoga, yeah. that's what it does for me. It is like such a good reminder. This is what we have. So that goes right back to the music thing. And I hate to come back to these analogies like this, but two things. Like one is when, when we're playing a show, it's, um, it's like the first, the first hit is like, I feel like the, for that next 40 minutes, it's just, not I'm not conscious like a normal human being mm -hmm. and and so not that I would be the instructor necessarily but when you're performing and you're in the in the zone or whatever you want to call it and the audience is there you're exchanging energy because when there's no audience there it's different mm -hmm. so that so the students could be like sort of the audience um, because when you're in the funk and you're, you're I'm gonna I'm gonna perform and do this class and you're you're there's energy because I I knew you were in a funk yesterday and when you taught the class I I I feel like I could see you um, I don't know what the right word would be you were you seemed bright you know mm -hmm. you were like the energy was being shared mm -hmm. and I think that's like a cool thing because it's um, it works with each other. We work with each other. Uh, the, everybody um, is there for a reason, t for a bigger cause or something. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's why it was so hard during the pandemic, teaching online oh. and all of that. You know, it was yeah, tough. Yeah, the energy is different. It's very different. It's really different, yeah. yeah. That was a yeah. rough one for everybody. Yeah. For sure. I mean, they kept, you know, all these people could like do like, uh, you know, music online. You're like, I can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> like, this is stupid. Yeah, you feed yeah. off your audience. You totally. Yeah. There, yeah. And also like, I'm like, go nuts on a, on a, in front of a camera. Like, yeah. it just seems weird. <laughs> you <know? laughs> well, you, you might think like, oh, 22 classes is a lot. But for me, it's like, it's 22 opportunities for me to just like to drop in mm -hmm. and let go of everything else. Of course. So it's not like it's two t 22 times I have to like perform and to teach mm -hmm. it's 22 times where like i can just like be in the zone and, and do the thing yeah mm -hmm. wow yeah. um well i think you guys are so special and, and i'm so grateful for both of you like i really feel like you two have shifted mm -hmm. at least my trajectory and, and on this planet mm -hmm. in a great way uh, like, yeah you help a awesome. lot of people yeah Thank you. i see it me one of them yeah. <laughs> oh thanks trust me I, I, my road rage is he's got gone. it bad yeah well, thanks. Down. That's really nice to say. And just, uh, <clears throat> just everyday shit. Yeah. Uh, just it's always good go. after a class to come back and like I'm so focused and so that helps so much. And I hope everybody else in those classes feel that way. I hope so too. I hope so yeah. Too. I mean that's that's the that's the goal and that's the hope that you know people enjoy it and and come away with peace and. Like so that's kind of why I say peace at the end of class too. But yeah, you know, they come away with with something other than what they what they got there. Came with, in with. Right? Yeah, came in with. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I I would like to just say like I mean if people hear this podcast it we we, I mean we can say where you guys teach at and stuff right. I mean because I I'm always like I don't want people to show up that I know that's weird but like I do want them to show up though and mm -hmm. you know Pilgrimage of the Heart's a cool place and it's um, located in a cool part of San Diego. And I feel like if um, people go to your classes, they'll learn some shit that's really, really vital. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Hopefully that'll, that'll work. No, I want to ask both of you, you something. You might not want to answer this question. Oh, you know what? I don't want to. I'll ask when we turn it off. No way. <laughs> we can cut it out if it's bad. Okay. Well, today I had a really bad experience in yoga. <clears throat> Were you and in a studio? I, I will. Huh? Were you in a studio? Yeah, I was here. Okay. There. But I don't want to say what That's fine. happened just yet. Sure. But oh. <laughs> he knows. <laughs> and it was uh. really bad. And I had to stop. But what is, it, what is like the most disturbing things you guys have seen as, a, as being an instructor during your classes? You've told me about the balls, and that's what he's talking about. Oh yeah, I've seen many. <laughs> I've seen many genitalia. Yeah, lots, male, female. Yeah, lots. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know that it's it's 
disturbing or anything, but um, you know, when when people have their moments in in class and they start to break down, um, mm -hmm. you you, you can't, your heart goes out to them and you, uh, know, you feel for them. Uh, um, so there have been lots of instances where like, well, people will just like students will just break down and, and you either have a cry or have to leave the room or do something. Um, and then on one, one end, you're like, oh, I hope it doesn't bother the rest of the students. But on the other hand, it's like they just like when I went to the heavy metal concerts, they mm -hmm. were able to come here and have that experience nice. and they might have been, been able to release something. So that 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 feels good. And that that like that makes me feel good about it. But it also like I'm like, is that person crying? Yeah, because like they're having like a negative experience uh -huh. or a negative emotional outburst. And it, but yeah, it's it's it's, it's disturbing. It's like. Sometimes you don't quite know how to how to deal with it. But he's mm -hmm. talking like Beavis and Butthead. No, 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 no. <laughs> I've had, I've had both, because I took um, Lauren's breathing class, oh. and was gonna go back to back, and it was like the second time I've gotten into it, and I sh like so, <clears throat> I left, you know, just to get some air because I was just like after that class, it was really intense. And I left just to get air, and I just started fucking bawling, but not like anything was wrong with me. It was just like this mm. shit just came out of me, and I was just... You and Becky had were taking the 12 o'clock class, uh. and I was walking around the corner, and I just fucking was crying, but not nothing like... It was bad. It was just like, just let it go, because yeah. she yeah. had us in this weird zone and then i've had my genitals hanging out today <laughs> i wore my running shorts and right away luckily i was in the back and i couldn't do i was just kind of just sat well at least you were class. kind of aware the people that i witnessed seem to have no clue Dude, how can they on. not like it's or they didn't being called care. air i've like, seen them I've i know seen you're too. one of the people you i was like what that guy's Shit's hanging out. It's hanging mm -hmm. out. There it is. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, we'll never demo Humble Warrior ever again. Yeah. I want to flick it. Like, <laughs> put that away. <laughs> <laughs> Just flick a penny in it. <laughs> yeah. Please. Um, I was gonna make. I was gonna throw a negative out in here and just be like, I, I, I have a problem when they, when they, when there's an instructor saying like, wish peace upon all living creatures, and I. I know what they're getting at, but there's a lot of humans that I, I cannot wish peace upon. And I, I don't know if that makes me a bad person or something, but um, I, um, I mean, I'm going to yoga to, to maybe try to wish peace upon them. I, maybe I haven't achieved it, but um, there are certain kinds of humans that are, are absolutely terrible. And I, and I wish no, no peace on them whatsoever. But I, but I don't want to be violent towards them, you know. So I see what they're saying, and I understand to an extent. And I, and I don't know if it's like counter, countering the concept or the sort of spirituality of yo yoga practicing practice. But um, you know, I mean, I just, um, I just can't, um, I can't do it. Uh, I, I mean, this is gonna be a lot longer than than what we might have, so you might want to cut this out if no, no, if it's it. good, it's good. Um, but you know, there's there's this concept in in yoga called samkhya. It's samkhya philosophy, mm -hmm. and the idea is that like we are not Nam and and Jamie and 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 Luke and Justin. We are just the universe expressing itself as Nam and Jamie and Luke mm -hmm. and Justin. So in the sense that like if we are all the universe, um, we're really not Nam and Luke and Justin yeah. and Jamie. Um, we're just one, right? So, like, if if harm becomes of one of us, we all share in that harm, right? Just like if you have a hand with five fingers and one of those fingers gets broken or hurt, it's not that finger that gets hurt. It's the person that owns a hand. It's not just the finger that's bad. It's mm -hmm. the person who who is attached to that is that it's actually that finger. So it's in that sense that like, even though there are you know terrible people in the world, um, wishing them peace is not necessarily being like. Well, even though you're evil, I still wish you peace. It's more like, well, you're just the universe expressing itself as this individual, and we're just wishing it peace because if we don't wish it peace, we're essentially not wishing peace for the entire universe itself. Or if we we're wishing harm to become to somebody, mm -hmm. we're essentially wishing harm to come to the universe. But I wasn't wish. I'm not wishing harm on those people. I feel like they're a, they're an oppressive force, and they're they're, you know, okay, like. 
you could you could take a, a obvious like the Koch brothers or something like that, you know, or or like on a on a more specific level, like um, a priest who's a rapist, you know, like I I uh, 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 you know the the um, cops who kill people because of their color or their skin you know like these are the people who beat up trans people because they're trans like those are the people that i cannot wish peace upon i just can't i get what you're saying but and i don't want to go necessarily harm those oppressive human beings i just don't want to give them peaceful energy sure i, I would I'd, re I'd rather save it for some someone that deserves it or for another creature or being that does that does deserve it. Yeah. So I just have, it's kind of like saying not, uh, kind of like saying namaste at the end. You know, I'm like, I don't, you know, like, you know, you don't need to do it. Peace is saying so much. When you say peace, I, I, I feel like it's such a righteous move. It feels cool. You know, like, mm -hmm. yeah, peace. It's good. Like to all of us in this room. I, I like that. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a difficult concept to grasp at first. Right. In the same lines, like, like, like we we first started talking during the whole George Floyd murder thing, and and I remember distinctly watching the video right and seeing the one Asian police officer mm -hmm. Tu Tao standing there with his back turned and not doing anything about it. Where I, where everybody's yelling, even like I was watching the video, yelling at the video for him like to turn around yeah. or something. I knew like the video already happened. It's a recording. Yeah. I'm still yelling at yeah. him, right? And what I realized like when I saw and what when I was watching that video. I didn't see his face. I saw my face on him. Wow. Right? And so this, in the sense, like, well, you know what? Like, even though he didn't per perpetrate the murder, yeah, he was still responsible for not acting, right? Complacent. And, right? and he was complacent with it. And then I saw, like, I was complacent with, like, a lot of things that was going on with me. And so knowing that, like, we are not, you know, all perfect. We are all f at faulty in some way. Uh, and having that compassion for that, little part in us so when we're saying you know i, I wish wish peace on this particular person or whatever mm -hmm. it's more like uh it's all it can be also referred to as like i'm wishing peace on the part of me that identifies a, at least a little bit with that with that individual yeah. right yeah because you know it's I, i've been beaten up by a fair share of nazi skinheads and they always have like a mexican dad that was abusive or you know they were raped or so, something you know yeah. like some bullshit that happened to them and that's why they became a bigot you know and i'm like okay so i don't i don't know it's a hard that's it's a, hard the it's oppression hard is, a, is yeah. a, it's just i mean that's why we do the things we do in the live the lives we live to try to make a better world yeah but I, I i i guess at least i'm a i'm thinking about it and it's being like yeah i wish that and i'm like no no i gotta think about this i have to contemplate this because it's it's hard really hard for me um it's a it's a mean world yeah. and it's also a beautiful world but it's a very mean world um because of select human beings yeah and it all comes down to capitalism really yeah, so sure. there's that so. And it could also be like that. The, whoever's saying it could just be saying it because it's a, plat a platitude. Yeah. And they don't actually mean it. They're just saying it because it's a thing to say. Just like you, yeah. You know, just like Namaste is a thing to say. So people. I do wonder about those instructors that say, "I wish peace," or "Let's wish peace upon every." I don't even know who says it, but it, it comes up, and I'm like, "No, I want to be like, no. What about this person? What about this thing? What about like Jeff Bezos? You know, like well, I don't know, like fucking the list just goes on and on. The U.S. military and whatever. Anyhow, uh, you know, so like I. I think about it. I wonder about it, about why someone's saying that because yeah, we can. The concept that you're saying is intense and involved and 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 deep, but the one statement, it on surface level seems like a slogan on a t-shirt. You right. know, yeah. it's like not enough. Yeah, and it could warrant a, an actual conversation with them and and totally you know, going up to them and asking them, you know, what do you mean by that? Like, yeah. like, or like ask them like, like I can't do that because of this person or that person. Yeah. Like, you explain that right now to me makes so much sense. Because you know? humans and, are like trillions of, of, of microcosm, like just little, uh, what is it? Like cells, you know, bacteria, like all these mm -hmm. things made up. And we're in like, when we see us, uh, the self in the mirror, it's actually like trillions of things different entities you know yeah. that make us up so yeah I, you I, mean I, we're not from adam and eve <laughs> well you can look at stuff right now and, and see the beard see a meat bag that looks like luke right <laughs> and then like <laughs> seven years from now you can look at the same mirror and you'll see like the meat bag that look like luke but that meat bag is comprised of completely different oh, cells know. and completely different yeah. things yeah. it's pretty wild yeah. 
isn't it weird to be human? <laughs> so weird. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, I'm glad that we dove into that, and I and you guys do instruct uh, in, in such a unique way, and it, mm-hmm. and I think it's. Um, I I hope that it does. I mean, I know it does for other people what it does for me, and to some extent, and I, I'm grateful for that. You guys are rare. It's cool. Yeah. Thank you. That's Absolutely. nice. Thanks. Thanks. Um, Should we all? Well, you're wonderful students too. So oh, yeah, let's thanks ohm. for. Uh, <laughs> Thanks for coming. Oh yeah, let's do that. I do trip out on Ohm every time because I'm like, that person's not in the right key, or like that sounds jacked up, and I and I can never, or I'll laugh and be like, that dude's loud. You know what I'm talking about? Um, Don't say his name, but yeah, be like, that guy's ohming so loud. Or, yeah, <laughs> I don't ohm in my classes mostly often. because like someone once told me that I sound like. I'm going ho 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 <laughs> like a Santa Claus. Oh. So I'm like, oh, I'm not doing that interview again. Is that why? So funny. Yeah. Oh, you gotta bring amazing. it back. Yeah. I always want to go like, <sighs> like some like black metal. Like, <sighs> I don't know. It's like, let's do this other thing, you know. But I know what the purpose of it is. But um, I always think about the the. the the, the musical aspect of it and I'm like oh my god what is that person doing what and like every is? so often I can feel like I'm doing an okay job but yeah. like more times than not I'm just like Jamie that was terrible no you're yeah. almost good yeah oh thanks yeah <laughs> sometimes it's better than others I'll tell you so there you have it episode 39 of the Colton and Culture podcast um, before we wrap it up we do want to uh, show you the video of Oak Jackson Uh, playing the Crystal Sound Healing Bowls uh, with Justin and I uh, controlling the effects with Earthquake or Pedals. Check it out.
There it is. Uh, that was a loaded podcast full of so mm-hmm. many different things. Yep. Um, thanks again to you. Thanks again to all of our sponsors. Um, Earthquaker, Fender, Heartwork Coffee, mm-hmm. um, and now Diodario. Yep. And specifically, we'd like to thank Patrick Keeney and Timothy Joseph for letting us use their awesome studio, Phaser Control. But yeah, Thank you, everybody. Um, thanks to Andy and Becky and everybody else that's um, been subscribing and checking out our podcast. Um, thank you. Yep. Cult and Culture is a ruinous media podcast, proudly sponsored by Earthquaker Devices, Heartwork Coffee, Fender, and Diodario. Planet, Planet B. B.